The comparison between a watermelon and the camouflage pattern of a baby tapir is perhaps one of the most genius level descriptions available on the internet and was made by none other than the IUCN's tapir specialist group. Baby tapirs are born after a gestation period of 13 to 14 months, which is longer than many of the other animals we have explored on this channel. After 5 to 6 months, the watermelon stripes give way to their adult coloration, for which the tapir specialist group unfortunately does not provide fruit related comparisons. Weaning is complete not long after this period, but time to independence may not be reached until 18 months of age. As a consequence of this long reproductive cycle, tapirs breed far less than many other animals, which is just one of the factors relating to the small decreasing population sizes of all four species of tapir. In particular, the Malay tapir has one of the smallest populations, with the low number of mature individuals being similar to that of the mountain tapir. The IUCN derives this total from three areas. Sumatra, Indonesia, which is anticipated to be below 4 to 500 adult individuals. Thailand and Myanmar, anticipated to be less than 250 adult individuals. And Malaysia and Southern Thailand, an area they consider to be the largest and most resilient, with several studies agreeing on approximately 1,300 to 1,700 individuals. The Malay Peninsula is also home to a collection of breeding centres and was the site of a fascinating study published in 2020 on the social and reproductive behaviour of captive Malayan tapirs. The researchers wanted to investigate how tapir reproduction is affected by previous breeding experience, enclosure type and size, and visitor numbers in order to better achieve self-sustaining captive populations. Interestingly, in their introduction, they point to both negative and positive effects of visitors depending on the animal. Anthropogenic, or human noise, has been shown to have a negative effect on the reproductive success of koalas, the Indian black buck, and the giant panda. Whereas with chimpanzees, for example, the researchers state that exposure to zoo visitors was found to have a neutral or even positive and enriching effect as human visitors represented the possibility to obtain food rather than being a direct stressor. This study was undertaken over the course of 18 weeks, between the dry and the wet season, and saw three pairs of Malayan tapirs observed for a total of six weeks each, with two of the three females confirmed to be pregnant, both of which had had previous offspring with the same partner. In addition, two enclosure types were noted, semi-natural, being surrounded by forest with no visitors permitted, and artificial, being surrounded by buildings and traffic and were open to visitors. An ethogram, which amounts to a catalogue or table of all the different kinds of behaviour or activity observed in an animal, was constructed based on tapir literature and an initial observation period, and temperature was also used for the main analysis. The results were split into three sections, month, maternal experience, and environmental factor effects. Of the social and reproductive behaviours listed in the ethogram, only one reproductive behaviour was influenced by month, with male identification behaviours peaking in April during the tested months. In terms of maternal experience, they found that the non-pregnant female and her resident male exhibited a high frequency of initiation and vocal behaviours compared to the two pregnant females and their male partners. They also observed a difference between the pairs that included Paris females, those that had given birth before, and the pair that included an oliparous female, those that had not given birth before, with identification and courtship behaviour being higher in the male kept with the oliparous female compared to males kept with the Paris females. Finally, in terms of environmental factor effects, they found that temperature did not affect social or reproductive behaviour, whereas larger enclosure sizes were positively correlated both with the identification and courtship behaviours in male tapirs and the frequency of initiation behaviour in males and females. Enclosure type, on the other hand, is somewhat complicated. Interestingly, the researchers found that tapirs in artificial enclosures which was the enclosure type open to visitors, 
engaged more frequently in initiation and vocalization behaviors than tapirs in semi-natural enclosures. However, the highest frequencies of initiation behavior occurred when the visitor numbers were at the lowest. One of the most interesting parts of the study's discussion relates to the time of day that the data was collected. The researchers state that due to logistical reasons, it was impossible to collect data at night during the predominant natural activity period of tapirs, and that nocturnal mammals such as tapirs rely heavily on olfactory signals, those relating to the sense of smell, and thus smell-related disturbance from visitors also needs to be investigated in future studies. All of these points raise interesting questions about the optimum setup for achieving the highest levels of reproductive success for endangered species in captivity. The Malay tapir is regarded by every source that I found as the heaviest of the four species. Some suggest a whopping maximum weight of 500 kilograms and over, but most cite a typical weight of up to 350 kilograms, which is roughly 50 kilograms more than the two largest American species both of which, depending on source, are referred to as the heaviest terrestrial mammal across Central and South America. The lowland tapir is known by several names, including the South American tapir, the Brazilian tapir, and the Amazonian tapir, with the term lowland separating it from the only other species found exclusively on the South American continent, the mountain tapir, which we'll explore next. The lowland tapir is the only species of the four not to be listed as endangered, with a conservation status of vulnerable. And although there is no mature population listed, a study published in 2022 estimates that between 2,700 to 16,000 tapirs remain in 48 confirmed populations. Traditionally, tapirs are thought of as solitary animals coming together to mate. However, some research does suggest that tapirs may be more social than previously thought. In 2014, researchers sought to test the hypothesis that tapirs tolerate individuals from adjacent and overlapping home ranges if they are related in a study titled Kinship and Social Behavior of Lowland Tapirs in a Central Amazon Landscape. The study points out that tapirs are difficult to observe in the wild due to their environmental and behavior patterns, so the researchers chose to analyze genetic data obtained from non-invasively collected samples. The study area was located in northern Brazil in a biological reserve created to offset the effect of the local Balbina hydroelectric dam. Preliminary surveys showed high densities of tapirs and the island structure of this area in fact made it much easier to study the tapirs as the researchers could move around by boat instead of trudging through dense tropical forest. As a caveat, in an interview with Monga Bay, the lead researcher did state that the impact of the flooding caused by the dam on the tapirs' natural behavior is unknown and should be taken into account when considering the study's findings. In total, 48 islands were surveyed by boat over 55 days during the dry seasons of 2009 and 2010. Tapir footprints were used to determine landing points for the boats, where the researchers looked for tapir feces and latrines, from which they took samples to obtain genetic data. Of the roughly 1,000 fecal samples found, only 63 were considered sufficiently fresh to sample and from the 55 field days, the researchers state that they obtained reliable information on at least 20 individuals, a number they compared to studies that used more invasive methods, which in fact shows that non-invasive sampling can be effective in researching elusive tropical species. The researchers found 10 first-order relationships, being parent-offspring or full-sibling pairs, 10 half-sibling relationships, 25 unrelated pairs, and 186 inconclusive pairs. In half of the first-order relationships and half of the half-sibling pairs, the individuals were located on opposite sides of the reservoir, and the researchers state that they did not find a statistical difference between distances of related pairs and unrelated pair differences, or between first-order pair differences and unrelated pair distances which shows two things. 
One, tapirs are capable of crossing the reservoir, indicating that the flooded area does not act as a complete barrier to their movement, and two, that their findings do not support the hypothesis that individuals that overlap in their home ranges are more likely to be related than individuals that do not overlap in their home ranges. They also mention their mating system analysis suggests that lowland tapirs are polygamous, where either sex can have multiple partners, whereas in another study, Baird's tapirs were shown to be polygynous, a type of polygamy where only males have multiple mates. In case you're interested, polyandry is the other type of polygamous mating system, one in which females have multiple mates. A classic example is seen in honeybees, where the queen mates with multiple males. The lowland tapir is not only present in the Amazon basin, but covers the largest number of countries of all the tapir species, being found in almost every South American country, with the exception of Chile. Conversely, the mountain tapir, also referred to as the Andean or woolly tapir, is found in the smallest number of countries at three, being limited to the montane forests of the northern Andes between Colombia, Ecuador and Peru. In addition to being the smallest species, as one might expect, the mountain tapir is found at the highest elevations, venturing no lower than 1400 meters, and has been recorded as high as 4700 meters, according to a study published in Oryx. One of the most cited studies on mountain tapirs was conducted in Ecuador, where researchers found that the environmental variables most important to the species were mean temperature of the wettest month, precipitation of the driest month, and precipitation of the coldest quarter, and concluded, tragically, that due to the mountain tapir's restricted home range, its habitat preference, and its small estimated population size in the Andes, the mountain tapir should maintain its current status as critically endangered in Ecuador. To the north, Baird's tapir is the only species found in Central America, where its range covers almost every mainland country. In similar fashion to the lowland tapir, Baird's tapir does not have a mature population published, but the IUCN's tapir specialist group estimated that roughly 5,500 individuals existed back in 2006. Just a few years later in 2009, a review article was published in Tropical Conservation Science, which has gone on to become one of the most cited pieces of literature I could find on tapirs. The author of the study compiled and reviewed literature on Baird's tapir ecology and conservation over a 15-year period between 1992 and 2007, as well as conferring with the tapir specialist group and included research conducted by himself and colleagues in Mexico. Historically, tapirs roamed continuously across Central America, but now, due to deforestation and fragmentation, they are confined to protected or remote areas. In Mexico, Baird's tapir is restricted to a small number of extensive tropical and montane forests at altitudes between 0 to 2,000 meters. In terms of abundance and population size of the few estimates available, some of the highest densities are thought to be found in Costa Rica's Corcovado National Park. In Mexico, at the time of writing, the author estimated a total population of 2,600 and stated that none of these populations would be viable in the long term by itself. Habitat preference showed the strongest correlation with five variables. Greater availability of permanent water bodies, a more diverse and dense understory, which implies more food, larger extensions of riparian vegetation, less incidence of fires, and less hunting pressure and human presence. The proportion of adult, juvenile, and young tapirs in Mexico was estimated at 78.9, 15.8, and 5.3% respectively, compared to 88.5, 3.8, and 7.7% in Costa Rica's Corcovado. The author states that this age structure may be explained by considering that a. Baird's tapir has a very low growth rate, b. individuals are long-lived, up to 30 years, and c. natural mortality rates tend to be very low in absence of human disturbance. 
Male to female ratios in Mexico were observed at 57.1% to 42.9%, which is roughly the same as observed in Corcovado. Home range estimates were hard to come by, and those that did exist were limited to Mexico and Costa Rica. In Corcovado, one specific study reported that individual average travel distances ranged from 379 to 720 meters for nocturnal 5 to 6 hour periods. Home ranges were roughly the same as the other studies and that male tapirs showed somewhat larger but not statistically different average home ranges than females. In Mexico, tapirs consumed around 98 plant species from 50 families, and the author states that tapirs are essentially browsers, spending up to 90% of their active hours on foraging, selectively consuming a wide array of fruit, leaves, shoots, bark, and flowers. Conservation threats were broken down into two main categories. As is the case with many species, fragmentation and loss of habitat leads to lower densities of tapirs, highlighting the ever-growing importance of protected areas. On a positive note, the author states that the creation of relatively large protected areas during the last three decades in southeastern Mexico is a positive sign, but also points to the need for stricter enforcement. Finally, on another positive note, at the time of writing, tapir hunting seemed to be relatively rare, likely due to the low densities of the species, the preference of local hunters for other prey, and the difficulty of carrying an entire 300 kilogram tapir back home. However, it was noted that even a conservative harvest rate may affect tapir populations to the point of local extinction due to their extremely low productivity. On the subject of predation, another study published in 2020 documented for the first time the predation of a bird's tapir by a jaguar in the Calakmul region of Mexico, which experiences some of the country's highest jaguar densities, according to a study you can learn about in this video, exploring species distribution modeling and the black panther. Thank you so much for watching.